Today we're going to work on a monochromatic painting in blues. Uh, the project is focused on transparency. So as you can see, I have set up in the background a series of bottles. They come in uh, some clear, some blue. This demo is on monochromatic blues. And as you can see to the left, I've I, photo I set up my still life. It took about 30 minutes. I photographed the still life. And then with my phone, I uh, converted the, this left image here. I used um, the filter to give it a cool blue appearance, wiping out all the color in the background. So I can work from my still life as well as the, um, the photograph. Okay, so on the right-hand side, as you can see, I already have my uh, drawing all set up and I sketched it in. Give yourself about 30 minutes to sketch in key marks on your drawing. Um, and then I've already mixed up some blues. So here I've got my, uh, on the left side, I have my cool blue. On the right side, I have my warm blue. The two blues I'm using are Windsor blue and French ultramarine blue. The French ultramarine blue will be your uh, your warm blue. I also have two, I have some paper towels on hand and I also have two uh, water containers to wash my brushes with. I try really hard not to mix uh, the colors. So I keep my brushes clean and that will help to keep your colors clean. So I'm going to go in. The first uh, process I'm going to uh, show you is a wet on wet. So I'm just going into the background of the bottles and I'm putting in, I'm just getting that background wet. And I'm not using any masking on this painting. We're not going to use masking yet. I just want to create a damp background and this is going to be my background a very light background color I'll use the Windsor blue you can use your cool blue so I'm going to let the background get a little bit damp but not dripping wet and that will when you do wet on wet it will give you a soft halo um, so I'm not going directly so uh, my surface is a little bit damp you can let it dry uh, to your liking you can look at it at an angle to see if you've covered all the areas you want to cover and then with a very very light uh, very watered down Windsor blue I'm just going to softly apply this color. You can lift up. Now, as you can see, I do like to work uh, vertically on a vertical surface. Um, I've been working on a vertical surface for many years, so I try with watercolor. It's a little tricky because it can drip, so I don't let my paints get too damp. But right now I really am just trying to put in a very light blue background. And I'm using the Windsor blue because it's a cooler blue. So we'll go over uh, wet on wet and glazing. And I'm looking at my sketch to the left. I'm looking at my still life. And I'm just putting in a very, very light toned background. So there is a window sill, uh, or the window frame goes across the back in a couple areas. I'm going to allow that to fall in there. And I have a nice vertical line coming down here, just to indicate the window. Here again, it's wet on wet, so it's giving me that soft halo. I could just dab in. Now I would like to create that sense of softness. Now the background, we want it to recede. So I'm going to go in and do the same for the area around the bottles.
Here I can go a little bit darker. Here it looks like I have a little bit of a mixture of that ultramarine blue will come in here. So I'm going to keep my background light and my foreground, I will allow the colors to get a little bit uh, less transparent. So they'll, they'll have more reflection. There will be more reflection off of the paper. So keep in mind with watercolor, we're, look, we're really focusing on reflections. Now I've got some really nice ultramarine going on, uh, ultramarine marine colors here in the, the bottle. So I may just mix up a very light ultramarine. I don't want to start dark. I'm going to start really light and then I'm going to layer on top as things dry. So I'm just going in and creating fields of that ultramarine blue. There's a nice reflection in this white bottle or clear bottle so I can put some of the ultramarine blue in the clear bottle oh, I grabbed the wrong grab the wrong color you have to watch for that it's focusing on making sure you're getting the right color Let's get my ultramarine blue And that's what the assignment is really about. It's really about discovering what you can do with a monochromatic painting, just using one hue. And in this case, that hue would be the color blue, using warms and cool blues. Now, right now with these, uh, I'm looking at the different uh, bottle shapes and reflections. You can see where I did a wet on wet there this is a field of blue that is wet on dry. There's a really nice um, soft area in here in this bottle in the foreground. So I'm going to wet that area for wet on wet. So I'm looking at my, my photograph is a little bit different than what I have in my the still life I'm looking at because the lighting has changed. But I'm going to allow this to get a little bit wet back here so I can allow it to soften. So I'm lo uh, going to allow that ultramarine blue to soften once it gets to the bottom of the bottle and gets a little darker. So here again, I did put some, we're going to do some wet on wet. A little bit of wet on wet to the left of this bottle here. Pick up my ultramarine and go in there and let it just fall to the bottom and create a nice little interesting edge there. Get a deeper ultramarine blue. Let it fall to the edge there. And when you're putting color over color, that's called glazing. One of the nice things about um, the wet on wet, as you can see, now I'm putting some hue into this wet area and that's wet on wet. And it's allowing that ultramarine blue to create some nice patterns in the glass. So these glasses that I'm using are full of water. So the nice thing about water is you get that nice transparent look. So here again, I'm going to wet, there's water in this bottle and I'm going to create a field of wet. And then if I go in there, I can lift up extra water with my brush by drying it. I can go in once that water is sitting on the surface and absorbs into the paper, then I can go into it and add a little bit more color and that will be soft. I'm adding a softer field of the ultramarine blue on top of a light 
wet and then I get that nice soft shape. Okay. So I see on the clear bottle on the right, I also would like to put in, this is clear, so I'm going to keep a lot of this light in here, but there's a reflection of the cool blue bottle. So I'm using my flat brush to bring this shape into the bottom of this bottle. And there's a little bit of a nice ultramarine picked up here. So here at the base of this cool blue bottle, see how you can draw a line with your brush. This is a, all this I'm doing is big shapes with the flat brush. I'm looking at my still life, not necessarily at the the light is changing, so my reflections may change a bit as I jump between my photograph and my still life. I do like what I see happening with some really nice reflections underneath this ultramarine blue bottle. Some really nice deep colors now that the light is changing. There's some sun coming through here. So if you put some color down and then you just grab a little bit of water, you could just drag it and let it get lighter as it moves to the bottom. And that's how you can mix the blues. Looking at the base of this jar. So when you're creating reflection, when you're looking at transparent glass, and you're, you look at what can you see through the jar? So right now I'm working on some reflective areas. I put my soft background in. Looks like I could use one more area of soft color. Go up over here. And I'm going to pull in a field of light cool blue. Okay. And I'm going to fill in this here. I'm almost sketching with the edge of my flat brush. The flat brush is very helpful just to put in edges. And I'm only thinking of shapes. I could just move this over and create a field of color and I will change that color once it crosses the line of the clear bottle in front. This is full of water and these two, this is called blending. I am blending the cool Windsor blue into the warm ultramarine blue in this background bottle. So that's how you can move one blue into another blue. Okay, so we've covered painting wet on wet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that blue bottle in the background as well. So I'm going to mix up a puddle of thin ultramarine blue. And I 
think I might use my angled brush that is a little bit smaller or possibly the angled brush and the flat brush are good for edges to just create the shape of this tall blue bottle in the background. I'm going to go with the top of the bottle. neck. Uh, keep in mind I'm only thinking of shapes. I'm looking at the shape of that top of the bottle where the lid close, closes over it. I capture the bottle and then I'll just bring go down We do want to leave some highlights in this bottle. So I'm going to leave some, let some light areas peek through. In that case, that's where this angled brush seems to work well. I'm looking at my still life and I see this nice, dark, deep color. I'm using my angled brush to create a nice, deep color. And then moving off of the mason jar in front, keeping the edge of that mason jar. And then I can always add water to this to soften the blue bottle in the back. Now I have a nice hard edge here. And then it breaks over and cuts into this bottle bottle on the left. I'm going to keep some edges soft and some hard. It's like it gets dark in here. So as we move lower on the bottle, there's areas where the light is not hitting. So we have some light areas and dark areas. So this is a good exercise doing a monochromatic piece where you're only focusing on the lights and the darks. Now keep in mind with transparency, when you have an object behind another object that's transparent, the object in the foreground is going to look lighter. So what I'll do with this tall, it was a balsamic vinegar bottle, and then the, that was a water bottle in the background. I'm going to use a lighter, ver, lighter color of the ultramarine blue. So this is going to give us, this will give us the indication that, yes, that ultramarine blue is, bottle is in the background. And this, but it should be lighter than the deep blue bottle behind it. And with watercolor, it's fun to just experiment with your brushes. Um, you will get to uh, experiment with what do you want dark and what do you want light. Here again, looking at that bottle and thinking, what are we going to put in and what will we not put in? You see here again, the wet on wet is working well. So use the wet on wet process for the bottles in the foreground. And that will give them that feeling of transparency. I'm just dropping in th this bottle is angled so I'm just hinting at there being some sort of uh, squared off shape on the bottom. I'm reinforcing that on this balsamic vinaigrette bottle. Okay, I'll thin out the edge of the bottle to indicate where 
the bottle continues. And this is a good start. Uh, we will let this dry and we'll go back in to add uh, some more washes of color over the color that we've put in and that would be the glazing. Oh, and one other thing I didn't put in, let's, let's mix, mix up a deep blue for the base. So we're going to, this dark blue will really bring this bottom edge to the foreground. And this actually you can do with your flat brush. I'm going to put a nice hard edge in and this nice hard edge is going to bring this front edge to the foreground and then the soft color in the background will send the, so the, the background to area to the background. So you could see, so I don't want to soften this too much as you can see how softening it, it started to compete with the background. So I'll go in and put more deeper color. And once again, I can glaze over this. I'll just pull this color all the way to the bottom. of the drawing. You can paint in wet on wet and you can paint with a dry brush in other words. So I'll give you a quick example. If I were to look up at the, the top part of this balsamic vinaigrette bottle, I can go in and pick out just a little very light amount of the Windsor Blue and just mimic, create a shape that mimics that top lip of the bottle. And later you can always go in and erase your pencil lines. So this is all dry here. I can just put in a field of color just to indicate the ref reflection, the shapes of the reflection of that blue water bottle in the background. And here I'm using a dry, the surface is dry paint on my brush. Okay, now that we've placed the large shapes in our painting, I'm taking, I, I, I'm taking another look at the still life and at my sketch. I went ahead and mixed up more color, um, both the lighter, uh, cooler blue of Windsor Blue and I mixed up some French ultramarine blue. And I'm, now we can just go in and I let the, painting dry for about 10 minutes while I cleaned up my palette. So I got rid of the colors I was using. I cleaned my water containers and now I'm ready to go in with a smaller brush. Now I, um, I, I didn't mention it in the beginning, but we start the painting with, we start large and light, and then now we'll go move down to smaller brushes and do smaller shapes. And as we layer color, on top, we'll start to get a little bit darker. So I'm going to look at this shape back here. This is a light shape. Um, so I'm using very watered down color. I'll put in a light shape here just to indicate the transparency of this bottle. This is one shape I didn't put in earlier. And then if I put this shape in now, we'll allow it to dry and get back into it. So 
So now I'm just going to do a series of little shapes and you can do it with a uh, dry brush or wet on wet. Here we have a really nice deep color that comes down the edge as you see some reflection. So I'm going to wet this, this edge where these two bottles meet and then I will put a nice deep ultramarine in there and then just allow it to bleed. So I'm going to allow this to get damp now as I do this, I'm creating organic shapes. My goal is to not, to, to look at the reflections and to create the really nice organic shapes that you see. So what I did was I just, I started with creating a shape you saw that was wet along the edge here. And now I'm just adding color to it. And if you need to smooth it off, you could just bring your brush through it. And now on my palette, I have some dark and some light mixes. In other words, some that are very, a lot of pigment and some just a little bit of pigment. Now I could come right up next to that ultramarine blue and put in another soft color, uh, transparent color next to it and let the whites show through to indicate the reflection on the glass. Just notice how I'm using the side of my brush. You can go along the side and that will give you some nice, interesting shapes. You see how I brought that down over a color and that's where you have your glazing coming in. But I'm gonna go ahead and do it over here because I think it will add a nice effect. And that's how you're getting transparency and reflection of glass. Again, I'm just using li very light, watered down values. I'll go in later with my dark values, just working on this bottle in front. This edge is standing out too much to me, so I'm going over it with some wash just to soften that edge because I don't think I really want it to be as hard as it was. And then later I'll go in with this and I'll blend this so it softens. And this whole process is just experimenting, going back and forth between glazing over what value do you want and experimenting with dry brush and wet on wet. Now I do want to indicate that this is a clear bottle and it's not a, a blue bottle. So I will be cautious not to let the, this value here get too dark. So I, if you need to pick up paint, I'm going in and I'm wetting it and I can dab it to pull up some of that paint and that's that's going to help that feel more transparent. It was, it just started to feel a little bit too opaque for me. So to, in order to erase in watercolor, what you can do is wet the area that you want to lift up color and then just use your paper towel to lift up that color. Um, you have to do it pretty early on in the painting. You can't do it later um, after two or three days. You can try it, but it may not be as effective. So I'm going to go in and add. That might be a little too dark. 
add some glazing in this bottle just to indicate the edge that goes up and around the neck of the bottle and comes down to indicate the shape of that bottle. And here the two bottles meet so I can put an indication of that cooler blue bottle crossing over. I'm going to soften this shape and allow it to be more of a glaze. So I just dipped my brush in water and then lifted and moved it. I'm double checking the shape of my bottle with what I've done here and you want them both to match. And I'll go in and lift up some color here to indicate a reflection. Keeping in mind, you always want to keep your values soft. You don't want them to get opaque. And I'm going to soften this edge because there's definitely some reflection here. So I'll soften this and lift up on this edge of the bottle. You can indicate where the light will come through. You can see how you can manipulate the watercolor just by adding water and lifting up. I don't want to lose this round edge. This is tricky. It, you don't want to draw the whole edge, but you do want to get give the illusion that this bottle continues over here on the left. I'll let that dry and then I'll go in with a deeper blue color. I do like what's happening behind this clear mason jar. So I'm going to add a little bit of wet on wet and let it bleed a little bit. And this is the water line in the bottle. But keeping in mind, I want everything to remain soft. I'll just go in and create some organic shapes. And here again, remember I had a color painted underneath and now I'm just adding a glaze of color on top. And you could see as you move into the bottle, at the water line, it's more transparent, it's lighter. So this should dry pretty light. Okay, so now I have this mason jar. This is clear and all these tones will be lighter and simple just as this bottle. So I'm going to mix up my Windsor blue, which is my cooler blue and just go in and indicate the areas where there's reflection and shadow. Not worrying about being too perfect with my shapes. 
I'm balancing my wrist on my hand. So I'm balancing my right arm on my left wrist in order to steady my arm. So here this is clear and right here is where we have the other end of this bottle coming through. We can see it, it's transparent. So I'm going to plate put that bottle in there and let it go from dark to light and then the water line is right about here. So I'm going to put in that shape. Let it dry and then once this shape dries, we'll go in and glaze over it. And there you can see how just layering and layering uh, fields of blue, light fields of blue, you can build up your drawing. So this water bottle, this blue water bottle is behind this mason jar. So here is where I'm going to bring in my a lighter ultramarine blue. All the way down to the water line. Now I'm squinting down on my still life to see that edge and by pulling out some of my ultramarine blue I can create a soft line that gives the illusion of that bottle in the background. Uh, this is an exercise in just paying attention to edges. Here again there's I'm just adding some pigment to already wet, an already wet area. Now to give this mason jar in the front some shape, I'm going to have to put a couple dark lines in there because it's starting to dis disappear. So there's definitely a strong edge that comes in and down, fix it at the bottom. So if you need to give shape to something, you can do it with a hard edge or contrast it with a soft edge. And to soften that, I may just add some water We definitely have the edge of this jar. Pay close attention to the edges that you do not want to lose. I see another edge. Here again, I'm going dark on top. So this mason jar has a nice lip up above the jar. And it is right down in front. So I'm going in and layering on top of the rings of the mason jar. Now you have to do this very carefully. Uh, you're balancing between too much or too little. I could see where we definitely need a white edge. You can either try to lift up the white edge or I can. Here I would be experimenting with some of that Chinese white after everything is dry, just to give an indication that this jar moves over. So to create that left edge of the mason jar, I just went in with some Chinese white that still allows for some transparency. So you don't want to lose that edge. If we were, we could have 
not allowed that to have paint on it. I see another area where I just want to finish bringing this blue bottle in. Okay, so we have this blue bottle in the background. It is lighter behind the mason jar. So I'm going to continue it over to here. And then the key is, is making sure that those white edges are, stay intact so right here. I want that left white edge not to disappear. I want the jar to be full. And so there again, I believe I will have to go in with the Chinese white with my number four, making sure I'm making sure that Chinese white is white. I'm not mixing it with the blue. And if this is dry, Go in and just indicate an edge. Oh, it's not quite dry. Let's see what I could pick up. Oh, it pick, picked up a little black. Let me pick that up. I'm going to go into the Chinese white again. Just help to create the bottom edge of the mason jar. Okay, so you would then continue uh, layering fields of color. Uh, here again, you can pick up, this is a flat one inch brush. It's picking up this edge with some ultramarine blue. Warmer colors will come to the foreground. Cooler colors recede. And go in with your cooler colors on this bottle and just create those nice organic edges that indicate reflection and transparency. So right now I'm just glazing over it dry. The, the, the underpainting has already dried. And this entire time I'm looking at edges. Here I have a nice dark edge of will help bring this to the foreground. Here I'm using the cool blue. This will help bring things to the foreground when you put a dark mark to indicate the base. Do the same thing beneath the mason jar here. some pencil lines here. I'm just going to 
create some small thin fields of light color and then when you erase the pencil lines those colors against the white tend to look really nice so again we'll I'm just going to put a little bit of value here to make that edge soft. If you want to soften an edge, you just put a lighter value right along the edge. I'll see if I can put a little bit of color in here just to indicate some reflection going on. And then a little bit lighter, that reflection continues down. I don't want to forget about my, to the edge of the shelf. Keeping in mind, I don't want to forget my reflections. So I have these bottles sitting on a marble surface. If you have a reflective surface, uh, it, it can work really well for a, a still life painting. Reflections are a lot of fun to work with. Uh, this would be here with a wet on wet of this mason jar in the foreground. You could create a really nice sharp shape with the ultramarine blue and that would really bring that to the front. You could see how it worked well when I put wet on wet right here. That was wet on wet. This one, I'll just let it move down. I'm going to have that soften as it goes to the edge and I can soften it by just wetting it and picking up some of the water or add water to soften that. Okay, and you could keep, keep working on it as long as you think is necessary. Careful not to overwork it. That's the thing with watercolor. Uh, to refine this, I would go in and touch up just the, the rims and it, just to indicate the rim. Uh, it's a good idea to erase your uh, pencil lines because once you erase them, you see what you have and you might be happily surprised and decide not to add any more color so that in that respect the transparency will work really well once the lines are erased.